Hi, sir. <laughs> what should I call you? What should I call you? No, just call me Tian. Tian only. Yeah, okay. okay. No, no presentation title. Okay. All right. So Tian, how have you been since we last heard of you via headlines? Um, well, I've been okay. I've been good. Um, busy as usual. So, do you still see yourself as a politician? Uh, okay, I never seriously see myself as a politician. Um, in fact, to me, I would see myself as a social activist. And, um, and we cannot escape um, being political um, because politics uh, is almost everything. Mm. So, um, as a social activist, we, we act to, to put forward our idealism, what we want to change. And um, there are different capacity we can do. Mm. We can act on that. Um, I think most people will equate politician as member of parliament or have a officially holding a position in a political party. But you were that. But yeah, yeah. That's in that sense people will ask me, are you still a politician? Mm. So to me, uh, to be political and to to act politically is uh, is my daily activities. So okay. um, in that in that sense people will still see me as a politician. The motivation of being political um, may be slightly different. A lot of people see politicians as in trying to retain power, trying to hold a seat or trying to have a position in a political party. But for me, to be a politician is to bring about change, to bring a certain ideal about society. And, and have you seen that change that. being brought about? If we look back for the last uh, 30 years almost, uh, we have seen a lot of uh, differences. Hmm. I mean, there's, uh, well, I would say there are quite remarkable positive uh, change that happened over the last uh, three decades. Okay. We just compare basic atmosphere. Um, probably if we started, uh, if you go back to 20 years ago, uh, people are not free. First of all, you know, I might get not get this type of interview. Okay. Yeah, and even if you get this type of interview, so you're trying editor, to say media was more controlled back then. Yeah, your okay. editor will be very kanchong. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you okay. You know, like oh, I don't know whether okay. we, we can publish things like this or not. So I think generally also people are, are a lot more relief hmm. in expressing their opinion. Well, if anyone remember two decades ago, even if you want to write a petition on objecting to some highway projects, you will be like, ISA. Uh, the, uh. <laughs> so people will talk like that. You see? And we know so you today, have personal experience with that, right? Yeah, yeah. Today, people will, will sign and will protest, will speak. Uh, in fact, some people even start to complain that is it a bit too excessive. Um, but. I think that is quite significant. It, the impact is not just we can see government change, prime minister change, or ministers being criticised, but generally society feel a lot freer. Okay, so yeah. that's one positive fit that you see in terms of um, the progress yeah, of well, it's, Malaysia. Yeah, well, it also follow up with a whole series of other things. Right. Uh, because, because we are freer to speak, because people are more aware and alert, our media is a lot more uh, open. That lead to a series of things. Lead mm -hmm. to politician has to act more responsibly, and uh, we lead to a lot more exposures on wrongdoing. Mm. And um, and well, I won't say it's totally eliminated, but then I would think that the mechanism for check and balance is a lot much better compared to when you have monopoly of power. So on that, right, I just want to understand from your point of view, um, the foundations of what a good political literacy or the makings of it, yeah. what, what do you think makes it I think it's, it's, it's raised on a very, uh, a, a, a groups of informed, um, what is it called, informed constituency. Mm. Uh, well, people in the communities are a lot more aware 
and to understand uh, whatever policy implication they have. So this, this will be a, a good uh, foundation for a healthy democratic system. Yeah. We gone with the day that we depend on benevolent or honest leaders to lead the country. We need the people who lead the leaders to do what the people want. So it's like turning the tables around, basically. Yeah, I mean, that's what democracy means, you see. Dem demo means the people, the rakyat, mm. you know. And when we first started, b beside the popular reformasi slogan, we used to say ketuanan rakyat, mm. means that, you know, the peoples are the master of this nation. What's the difference between speaking freely and speaking without thought? I think a lot of time, um, if we do not have the information, then people speak without thoughts. Okay, mm. and uh, speaking without thoughts was allowed, but not uh, not inform criticism. Okay, you see, uh, speaking without thoughts is that when you walk around the street, you say, "Why so many migrant workers? The crime rate increased because of these people coming in mm. to the country." That is without thought, mm. without information. Um, we say, oh, why all the Chinese is taking over the business? What happened to us <laughs> who are being oppressed? So that is speaking without thoughts. Okay. You know, uh, people who say, uh, why all these civil servants so lazy and not doing work for the country? That's also speaking without thoughts. And in fact, they were allowed. <laughs> right? But when we pick out a whole stack of documents to say that why this project is being rewarded without tender, why this uh, big sum of money, a few millions, gone uh, disappeared? Why you know this supposed to be a cow rearing project and not to be using it for real estate investment? They were not allowed. We were charged. We were were attacked, and the press were not allowed to print it. Simply for just raising the matter. Basically. Yeah, for raising with facts and with uh, with information. There's a certain tendency to allow the society to go for this very superficial, very gut-feeling type of uh, expression. And that is part of the problem today, yeah. right? People just speak to say, my problem is because my race was opposed by the other, was oppressed by the other race. Or I'm poor because, uh, because you know, the other groups are stealing the resources of this country. Mm. Or I'm... I'm, uh, what's I call, this country is uh, go downhill because of certain race are too lazy. Right. So these are things that has been promoted uh, unofficially as a politician, as political activist, as NGO activist, as media. We should try to go beyond just reporting people's uh, or just uh, mimicking people's gut feeling. Mm. And that's what to me, that is a change. The change is not about who come to power, who is replacing who, uh, which party is going to take the, the government or exco or minister. Uh, instead, there is a qualitative change on the, the society, where societies understand the problem they face and they all collectively trying to seek mm. solution. So your main push is for the rakyat to just rise, basically, to be to more... To rise, uh, to understand beyond what uh, superficially being told, mm. right? So Why do you think they still, you know, fall for these traps, right? Uh, people who have vested interests tend to only present one side of the story so that they can continue to hold on to power. Uh, people who... Um, are guilty of um, misappropriating the rakyat trust. The people trust will tend to trying to f seek blame on others so that they are not responsible. So I think that's why a democratic system come together not just by having people have, have a, uh, of rights to vote, but also free media, uh, independent judiciary, as well as uh, a transparent administration. Mm. So that has to come in one package.